Chapter 1181, Complicit in Crime, 6. The countenance depicted upon the painting was exactly the same as what he remembered in his mind. Jun Xian did not dare believe that the young man who had helped them at the time was in reality the grand advisor of the fire country. Jun Wuxi saw Jun Xian's reaction and she was sure that her guess had been correct. She dismissed Lei Chen for the moment and only Jun Xian and her were left in the room. Grandfather, is that him? Jun Wuxi asked, to reaffirm the fact. Jun Xian nodded his head resolutely. That face, was one he would never forget his entire life. How did he turn out to be the fire country's grand advisor even having seen the portrait of Wen Yu? Jun Xian still found this startling discovery hard to accept. Before the Qi Kingdom's founding, the fire country had already been established for a long time. And according to rumors, their grand advisor should already be rather advanced in age. How did it turn out like this? Jun Xian really could not understand why the fire country's grand advisor had chosen to suddenly reach out his hand at that time to help people like them. Jun Wuxi narrowed her eyes. Back in the fire country, she had already felt that the grand advisor was not someone ordinary but as he had been friendly and not shown himself to be a threat, she had not given it much thought, never expecting that the Qi Kingdom's soul calming jade was given to them by Wen Yu, so how did Wen Yu manage get his hands on the soul calming jade? Having just resolved one mystery, but more and more questions were gathering in Jun Wuxi's mind that needed her to find answers for one by one. Wen Yu's appearance had not changed all this time and time had not left its trace upon his face in the slightest. Judging based on the way he looked, Wen Yu would be a handsome looking young man only in his twenties, just that his demeanor and mannerisms were completely devoid of the impatient and brashness of youth, but instead showed polished manners that could only be a result from long years of experience and trials. Wuxi, you are now the emperor of the fire country, and this Wen Yu Jun Xian could not help but look at Jun Wuxi rather worriedly. If Wen Yu was really that person, his capabilities should then not be underestimated and would Jun Wuxi's real identity be discovered by Wen Yu? Jun Wuxi shook his head. The Grand Advisor had not tried to make things difficult for me. He seemed to not want to become overly involved with the affairs of the Fire Country. Regardless whether it was the truth behind Lei Chen's birth or about how she had overthrown the emperor, Wen Yu had remained a bystander who just observed from the side, almost never initiating any actions on his own. His aloof attitude from all matters made one unable to help themselves but be curious as it made him seem completely unconcerned about the fire country at all. Jun Xian sighed slightly in relief. If I really have the chance to meet him in the future, I would really like to thank him properly. No matter how much trouble this soul jade had brought us, but it had preserved your father's body, keeping it in such perfect condition, which really comforted me. Jun Wuxi nodded, knowing that the Jun family's father and son had always longed for Jun Ge to be revived. That wish, she was willing to help them achieve. Based on what she saw in the Jun father and son, she believed that her own father would also be a hero worthy of respect. Regarding the matter about the soul jade, do not let any news about it spread outside for now. The invasion into the Qi kingdom this time, was all because the Condor country wanted to snatch the soul jade. I will resolve the entire matter and grandfather will only need to rest and recuperate properly. Jun Wuxi said filially. From the bickering among the commanders, it had not been difficult for her to decipher that they had not known what Lin Xiao was seeking for. With the exception of the Condor country, the other armies of the three countries had merely been roped into playing an assisting role and the crux of the problem had come from the Condor country itself. You just rest assured. That jade, one piece of it is with your father, the other is kept on your uncle's body at all times. Besides our men from the Ruilin army and his majesty, no one else knows that both pieces of the jade are in the Lin palace? Jun Xian said. Chapter 1182, Complicit in Crime, 7. Jun Wuxi thought back to her own soul that had warped over here and the reaction when she had touched the soul-calming jade. 
the amazing golden seed had been infused in her body and she really wanted to attempt to see whether she presently possessed the capability to resist the effects of such a spirit artifact. A little later, I will go find uncle to go take a look at the soul jade. June Wuxi said. If that golden seed gave her the ability to withstand the effects of spirit artifacts, then even when she was to be faced against the twelve palaces in the future, she would be equipped with another layer of assurance. After all, how many magical artifacts do the twelve palaces hold in their hands was not known to them. Jun Xian nodded. Jun Wuxi noticed that Jun Xian was exhibiting a tinge of weariness and she didn't want to disturb her grandfather any further. She retreated from the room and did not hurry herself to go deal with the other tasks on her hands but walked to the courtyard in the Lin Palace that belonged to her. The Ruilin army soldiers upon seeing Jun Wuxi appear, suddenly stood at rigid attention. Although their faces were expressionless, their eyes were however filled with smiles. They all knew, that the little emperor of the fire country before their eyes, was just their very own young miss. Jun Wuxi did not encounter anyone who stopped her within the Lin Palace. Everyone had a tacit understanding on it all. Returning back to her very own place that she had not lived in for a long time, she found the tables and chairs clean as new. Even when she had asked Long Chi to bring word back that she would not be returning for a long period, her room and the entire courtyard was still kept clean and tidy, like it had always been waiting here to welcome her back home. Jun Wuxi lay down in her own room, her nerves that had been pulled taut for an entire year finally able to relax immediately upon lying down there. The little black cat sat at the edge of the bed, licking its paws lazily as it looked calmly at Lord Meme and the sacrificial blood rabbit wobbling in from outside through the door. The two innocent beasts had put on quite a big show in the battle before and they had now come rushing in to ask for praise from Jun Wuxi. Jun Wuxi picked up the two naive little beasts in turn onto her bed and enjoyed the momentary peace and tranquility. Wishing that time would just freeze right at that moment, unknowingly, Jun Wuxi actually fell asleep as she lay on the bed, haven't even had the time to clean off all the blood all over her, falling into a sound sleep with her blood smeared armor still on, where even the stench of blood she had always found so unbearable could not even wake her up from her dreams. In order for them to rush to reach here to the Chi Kingdom in the shortest time possible, she had not even had a chance to close her eyes from the time she left the Thousand Beast City, and had rushed the entire way, the constant rage and worry causing her to be unable to calm her heart. Only after the maniacal massacre and having finally returned back to her old abode her heart had longed so strongly for where she was finally able to let down her guard, Pure exhaustion immediately claimed her to drag her into a deep sleep. The little black cat remained hovering beside June Wuxi and Lord Meme together with the sacrificial blood rabbit were similarly tired and weary. They leaned against June Wuxi's body and fell soundly asleep as well, leaving only the little black cat who was a spiritual body not feeling the slightest tinge of exhaustion. It was not known how long a time had passed when light footsteps made the little black cat prick up in alert. It lifted his head to look towards the door and saw June King having just stepped one foot inside through the door. Upon seeing June Wuxi soundly asleep on the bed, he was slightly startled and he subconsciously lightened his steps, to quietly come to the bedside, pulling the blanket up to cover June Wuxi, before silently slipping himself outside. The little black car continued to lie on the bed and saw June King pulling the door shut. It glanced at Jun Wuxi's face that was soundly asleep and swished its tail lazily before morphing to silently slip inside Jun Wuxi's body. She really deserved to give herself a good sleep. Chapter 1183, Seeing the Soul Calming Jade Again, 1. When Jun Wuxi woke up from her dreams, the sun's rays were shining in through a window that was slightly ajar, to spill onto the floor. Lord Mema was sleeping with all four of its hooves sticking up in the air while the sacrificial blood rabbit was sleeping soundly upon Lord Mema's soft belly. One of Lord Mema's hooves would twitch occasionally and the sacrificial blood rabbit would subconsciously stretch out a paw to hold down the hoof. June Wuxi's mind was still groggy with sleep and her nose was filled with the pungent stench of blood. 
she massaged her temples as she got off the bed and slowly unbuckled her armor piece by piece to throw them onto the floor, leaving just the cloth robe underneath on her. The armor fell to the ground in a loud and clear clattering, the noise immediately sending a slight shiver to run through the Ruilin army soldier standing guard at the door. Your Majesty from the Fire Country, we've gotten the hot water all prepared and ready for your use. Would you then like to have a bath? From outside the door, the Ruilin army soldier's stoic voice came floating in. June Wuxi frowned slightly and said, Just have it sent over now then. Yes. The Ruilin army soldier outside stifled the twitch that tugged at the corner of his mouth, trying hard to maintain his stoic composure as he immediately turned to run towards the kitchen to get people to deliver the hot water over. The young miss has finally awoken. His mood was rather joyous. His steps suddenly feeling lighter. When the hot water was brought into the room, June Wuxi looked at the light in the sky and asked the Ruilin army soldier making the delivery. How long did I sleep for? Not much, just a day and a half. The Ruilin army said, forcing on a calm front. His hands quickly drawing out the bath for June Wuxi. A day and a half. June Wuxi had not thought that she would sleep for so long. Within this period, did anything happen out there? June Wuxi thought that there was no more need to disguise her identity before the Ruilin army's men and she asked in a manner that could not possibly be more nonchalant and casual than she did. Completely unlike the Emperor of the Fire Country when she had first stepped into the Lin Palace, but acted exactly like a resident member of the June family. From the mannerisms the Ruilin army soldiers had shown her before. She knew that the men must have already guessed her identity so why should she continue to hide it from them? Reporting to young Erm, your majesty from the fire country, the little lord has left instructions to say after you wake up, we are to prepare a bath together with a fresh set of clothes for you, and only after you have eaten your meal, are we allowed to tell you about the things happening outside? June Wuxi was slightly surprised and the cold chill in her eyes unconsciously softened a little. Got it, you're dismissed then. Her uncle had made these arrangements, seeking to have her worry less and rest more about things. No matter who she was outside, back in the Lin Palace, June King was her uncle, an elder. His instructions, must therefore be obeyed. After taking much effort to wash off the blood off her body again and again, she was finally rid of the stench that clung on to her. The clothes that June King had prepared for June Wuxi was a set of men's clothes in her size, her sweet and considerate uncle having thought of everything for her. With the stink of blood fading off from her body, it was slowly replaced by the familiar faint fragrance of herbs. After she finished her bath, it wasn't long before highly fragrant and aromatic dishes of food were brought into the room. As she dug into the meal, June King and Long Chi came walking in, with wide smiles upon their faces. At least you know you should eat after waking up. Just how long have you, this little lass, not given yourself proper rest that you have immediately fallen in such a deep sleep for a whole day and a half the moment your head touches the bed? You didn't even manage to stay awake long enough to eat before that and made me worried you will starve. June King nagged as he looked helplessly at June Wuxi. Seeing the scene where his niece who had always been a little obsessed with cleanliness still dressed in her blood caked armor as she slept so soundly immediately upon her head hitting the pillow, June King found it rather amusing and at the same time causing a slight ache to fill his heart. Chapter 1184, Seeing the Soul Calming Jade Again, 2. June Wuxi gave her uncle a rather awkward glance as she had not thought that she would sleep for that long as well. All right. All right. Just teasing you. Hurry up and eat. Don't starve. June King said with a helplessly laugh as he shook his head, sitting down on a chair by the side. June Wuxi then picked up her bowl and chopsticks to begin eating her food slowly. Having taken just two mouthfuls to line her stomach, she raised her head up again to look at June King. Uncle, you came here to see me for something? June King replied, It's not much really. Didn't you tell your grandfather that you wanted to take a look at the soul jade? I heard about it and had wanted to bring it over to you but did not think that I would find you already fallen asleep. I got the men to stand guard at the door and instructed them to look for me when you wake up, 
to save you some steps running around to look for me. The Ruilin army soldier guarding the door was arranged by Jun King. He knew that Jun Wuxi had completely exhausted herself and she would definitely want to bathe and change when she woke up, and she would surely need to eat. Where's the soul jade? Jun Wuxi appreciated her uncle's thoughtfulness and upon hearing the first mention of the soul calming jade, she immediately forgot about needing to eat and just opened her mouth to ask about the soul calming jade. Jun King raised a hand and flicked a finger on her forehead. The thing is on me right now and it will not be going anywhere. You first take care of your stomach and if you do not finish the rice in your bowl, I will not be showing the soul jade to you. In a year, Jun Wuxi had grown quite a bit taller, but she was still a little too slender. Having not seen his niece for a year, when Jun King saw the skinny frame on Jun Wuxi, his heart winced painfully. If not for the war, he would have gotten the men to gather all the most delicious delicacies and put them all in front of Jun Wuxi to properly nourish her. All right Jun Wuxi lamented as she rubbed at her forehead where she had been hit. It had not been painful, but had instead made her heart feel a comforting warmth. She had not experienced this warmth from her family for a long time and even the slightest bit of it was irreplaceably precious to her. Seeing that Jun Wuxi had buried her head into her bowl to eat again, Jun King finally relented, not entirely serious when he said Jun Wuxi did not have to care about everything happening outside. She had become the fire country's emperor and if he did not share a word about what was going on out there, her heart would still worry about it. The fire country's army has set up camp outside the city and the Qi kingdom's soldiers and citizens are busy with restoring the city from the damage incurred. We also send food outside to the fire country's camp every day. This is the first time I have come in contact with the fire country's army and I must say that the fire country's army is rather well trained. With so many of them just at our doorstep, there hasn't been any chaos and there hasn't even been a single incident of conflict with the citizens in the city. Jun King said, giving a highly simplified account of the situation outside over the period she had been unconscious after the war to Jun Wuxi. The fire country's army under the supervision of Lei Chen and Lei Zai had been well behaved and not only had they not stirred up any trouble, they had even asked to let them help to repair the city's walls. Of course the initiative could very well have been all due to Jun Xi's position. But Jun King was nevertheless still very grateful for the help. That's what a soldier should be like. By leaning with the strong to bully the weak, that's not what makes a man. Our Uilin army had always remained steadfast in this. Jun Wuxi mumbled as she chewed on her food. Long Chi who had been standing on one side, had his eyes fill up with pride upon hearing those words. Jun King laughed aloud and shook his head helplessly. You are now already the fire country's emperor, how can you still say things like this? The fire country's army is rather good, but the Ruilin army isn't too shabby as well. They could both be considered to be stalwart and rigorously disciplined forces, and I was just stating facts. Jun Wuxi replied. She had not meant to compare the armies from the two countries but had only mentioned it in passing. Only after Jun Wuxi finally cleaned out the rice in her bowl did Jun King then bring out the soul jade he carried around with him on his body. Chapter 1185, Seeing the Soul Calming Jade Again, 3. That one half of the soul jade was carefully stored in a cotton bag by Jun King and always kept close on his body. This item could very well affect whether his elder brother, Jun Wuxi's father, would be able to be revived and he did not dare to be careless with it. Jun Wuxi stared at the soul calming jade. She was in no hurry to pick it up and she merely raised her head to look at Jun King. Uncle. In a while if I start to show any strange symptoms, you must not panic. I will be fine. Jun Wuxi said, unable to be certain whether she would be still be affected by the effects of the soul calming jade, not wanting any reactions she might have from the soul calming jade to worry Jun King. Jun King was taken aback hearing those words. Would the soul jade have any adverse effect on you? Jun Wuxi shook her head. It wouldn't matter. Jun Wuxi had put it across very lightly, but Jun King was still rather worried, where he was already thinking of keeping the soul jade away. 
Fortunately, June Wuxi had repeatedly assured him that she would not do anything that would hurt herself and that made finally made June King change his mind. June Wuxi drew in a deep breath before slowly reaching her hand out to gradually place her hand upon the soul calming jade. The feeling that made her spirit quiver from before did not manifest. Under her palm, she only felt the slightly chill and cold surface of the soul calming jade. No reaction. June Wuxi's heart jumped slightly. Did that mean the golden seed within her body had not only repaired her damaged soul but it had even made her soul meld perfectly with this shell of a body? That discovery caused a tinge of delight to rise within June Wuxi usually cold and indifferent heart. When the soul was unstable, the problems that could possibly arise from it was too many and now that it was resolved, it made June Wuxi silently heave a sigh of relief. The nervousness disappeared from June Wuxi's eyes but the expression on June King who was sitting on one side still looked wary as he was deeply afraid of anything that could happen to June Wuxi. How? June King asked cautiously. June Wuxi raised her eyes to look at June King and said softly, nothing. However, just as June Wuxi's voice just fell a strange feeling suddenly spread very quickly within her body. That strange feeling wandered out from her physical body and expanded to reach her every single nerve, seemingly like something was stirring within her soul. That kind of feeling where big waves were being kicked up in one's soul made June Wuxi immediately clench up her fists, and her face quickly turning deathly white. Upon seeing the drastic change in June Wuxi's complexion, June King instantly jumped up from his chair. He looked at June Wuxi anxiously but with June Wuxi's preemptive warning, June King did not dare to touch his niece recklessly, but could only look on worriedly as June Wuxi's face became whiter and whiter. The strange feeling got more and more intense, and June Wuxi felt as if her soul was being torn apart by a strong force, the feeling being completely different from when she had touched the soul calming jade for the first time. Cold sweat beaded and rolled off her forehead wetting the floor around her feet. She clenched up her jaw tightly, resisting against the strange feeling she had never felt before. It wasn't painful, but it made one highly uncomfortable, as any ripple that ran through one's soul, could bring about an enormous reaction. What was really happening? Even June Wuxi herself was not able to explain the situation properly. Under the waves that surged through her soul, she began to feel dizzy and faint her stomach churning incessantly. She wanted to move her hand covering over the soul calming jade away but she no longer had the strength. Chapter 1186, Greetings, My Mistress, 1. The little black cat could feel that something was wrong with June Wuxi and it quickly leapt up onto the table, lifted its paw and struck lightning quick at the piece of soul jade under June Wuxi's hand to push it away. In the instant that June Wuxi's hand was separated from the soul calming jade, her body suddenly involuntarily started to fall backwards. June King was quick on his feet to catch her and when he saw the deathly pallor on June Wuxi's face, his heart immediately leapt into his throat. Long Chi. Fetch the physician quick. June King roared anxiously. Long Chi had turned and was about to dart out the door when a voice suddenly rang out. A physician will be of no use. Long Chi and Jun King immediately looked up and discovered that the voice had actually come out from the little black cat's mouth, and their faces immediately twisted up into expressions of speechless incredulity. The little black cat jumped off the table and slipped onto Jun Wuxi's body, its little head pressed against Jun Wuxi's forehead. Jun Wuxi's condition was obviously a problem that afflicted her soul and bringing in any physicians would not help her in any way and instead just expose June Wuxi's real identity. June King was June Wuxi's family and the little black cat trusted him and hence it had not had any qualms about speaking before him. June Wuxi's consciousness gradually sank into darkness. She seemed to be feeling that her spirit was being struck by another force continuously, the feeling highly unbearable as her spirit was slowly cracking open from the constant impact, seemingly something was slowly spilling out from that crack. Suddenly. She opened her eyes wide. Wuxi. June King immediately called out when he saw June Wuxi regain consciousness. June Wuxi's face however, creased up into a frown, 
A burning surge was at that moment rushing into her hand. On her finger, a red light was glowing constantly, the location of the light it was glowing at, was exactly the spot that June Wooks's spirit ring was. Her entire finger felt like it had been put over a fire to be roasted, the pain so excruciating that it could drive a person mad. June Wooksy clutched at her finger stoically, her entire body shaking a little uncontrollably. June King and Long Chi at the side were so anxious they were like ants upon a hot pan, but completely clueless on how they could help, unable to do anything but stare fixedly at June Wooksy's little pale face, their fists tightly clenched up. All of a sudden, the glowing red light exploded within the room. With that brilliant burst of exploding light, a strange fragrance quickly permeated throughout the entire room, and within that red light, a slender figure was slowly being revealed. At that moment, the strange feeling that trekked at her inside June Wooks's body faded away. She panted slightly through narrowed eyes, to stare at the figure revealed, after the red light dissipated. How many years had it been? that someone is actually compatible with me. A lazy and languid male voice suddenly rang out beside June Wooks's ear, and together with that voice, a fiery red figure suddenly appeared right before June Wooks's eyes. A good-looking man dressed in a bright red brocade robe stood indolently within the room, his head of long black hair flowing down his back carelessly secured by a hair tie, the ink-black tresses contrasting against his red clothes, beautiful and bewitching. The man had an attractive countenance, his long upslanted phoenix eyes narrowed very slightly, seemingly containing the endless touch of spring, a tinge of red over that pair of eyes. The sudden appearance of the mysterious man caused June King and Long Chi within the room to immediately raise their guard. They wanted to protect June Wuxi, but for some unknown reason, they could not seem to summon the slightest bit of their strength, their limbs suddenly feeling uncannily sore and weak like all the strength within their bodies had been drained out from them, where they found to even maintain their current stance, had become highly taxing on them. Chapter 1187, Greetings, My Mistress, Two. Who are you? June King asked through gritted teeth while summoning the last ounces of his strength, to look warily at the red-robed man. The red-robed man's eyes turned slightly, to sweep across everyone within the room his gaze passing over the little black cat who was staring at him with hostility, to finally fall upon the figure of June Wooksy. I really had not thought that it would be someone so young. The red-robed man opened his long legs up in a wide stride, to walk towards June Wooksy who was being held within June King's arms. What are you thinking of doing? June King saw him coming towards them in approach, and every cell within him was almost going to explode. The red-robed man lifted an eyebrow slightly and looked at June King who was almost at the end of his strength, and he smiled sinisterly to say, not bad, to think that you can hold out till now. That shows you at least have some semblance of capability. But whatever I want to do now, you think you have any strength left to even stop me? Upon saying that, the red-robed man bent down and reached his hand out towards June Wuxi. As he got a little closer, a look of astonishment flashed in the red-robed man's eyes. On you, why do I detect the scent of that little idiot? At the moment of the red-robed man's hesitation, the little black cat morphed into its black beast form and leapt at him, using its sharp claws and fangs to force the man away from June Wuxi. The red-robed man took a step backwards. His eyes narrowed as he stared at the black beast with its bared fangs. Ah you are also a spirit body? Roar. The black beast let out a low roar, the sound shocking Lord Meme and the sacrificial blood rabbit awake. The moment they opened their eyes, they saw the black beast faced off with the red-robed man and almost by instinct, they immediately saw the red-robed man as an enemy. In the instant the two spirit beasts were about to attack. They suddenly discovered that their strength were almost all drained out and even when they just wanted to stand up, they found themselves unable to do it. The red-robed man gave a light laugh, looking at the black beast's highly aggressive demeanor, his eyes still showing a sort of puzzlement as he turned his gaze back to look at June Wuxi. No need to get so excited. I won't do anything bad anyway. The red-robed man shrugged easily. 
June Wooks's brows creased up into a frown, the waves within her soul vanished away, but the residual effects still leaving her rather weak while she seemed to find the fragrance permeating the room rather familiar to her. That scent, was very much like the fragrance of a evil flower in her past life. Just who are you? June Wooksy asked chillingly, her eyes narrowed. The red-robed man opened up his arms and before everyone's eyes, he lifted the hem of his robe and knelt on one knee right before June Wooksy. Greetings, my mistress. I am your ing spirit. What? The moment the red-robed man's words left his mouth, June King and Long Chi stared at him with wide incredulous eyes. Ring spirit? How is that possible? They had never ever seen a ring spirit taking a human form. Moreover June Wuxi obviously already has a ring spirit, so how could there be a second one? Looking throughout the lands, all the way from ancient times till now, never had a person ever possessed two ring spirits. June King and Long Chi could not make themselves believe a single word the red-robed man was saying. But June Wuxi's eyes merely showed a trickle of surprise but did not exhibit any expression of disbelief, and even the black beast standing before June Wuxi had retracted its aggressive stance. You are a plant ring spirit. Those highly shocking words came out from June Wuxi's mouth, showing she fully believed the red-robed man's words, which Long Chi and June King found completely unbelievable. Chapter 1188 Greetings, My Mistress, 3 the red-robed man smiled slightly and said, Mistress is indeed most perceptive. With me in this form, and you still can guess it correctly. After saying that, his eyes narrowed up and within that thick fragrance in the air, he tried to seek out that faint trace of an elegant scent. I think, that I am not my mistress first ring spirit. Or should I say I am not your first plant ring spirit. That faint scent of lotus was so familiar to him and he would never fail to recognize it. Retract that fragrance of yours. June Wuxi said with a frown. She had prepared herself before this, that a second ring spirit might appear, but she had never thought that it would be after she touched the soul jade. But thinking back on it in hindsight, June Wuxi could very well guess at the reason behind it. The devious wyvern had opened up the doors into the spirit world and the soul calming jade that had an effect on spirit bodies had acted as the catalyst, which caused her second ring spirit to appear at this moment. But June Wuxi had not expected that the ring spirit's true form, could very possibly be that of a flower of evil. Mistress does not like the fragrance emanating out from me. The red-robed man's face suddenly showed an expression of grief. If it didn't cause the limbs of life forms to become weak, I think I wouldn't mind. June Wuxi said in a cold voice. In her past life, she had come across a kind of evil flower. The appearance of that flower usually brought with it endless deaths and evil. After she was reborn into this world, she had not seen a plant similar to it here and she had thought that it did not exist in this world, but never had she expected it exists here and was even in the form of a plant ring spirit. Surprise showed in the red-robed man's eyes, he had never once thought that June Wuxi would discover the hidden effects of his fragrance within such a short period of time. This was the first time that such a situation had happened to him. Wuxi you said it's the fragrance that is causing our bodies to become so weak? June King asked in shock. He had been thinking to himself why for no reason, he had suddenly not been able to summon up his power. June Wuxi nodded and her gaze fell on the red-robed man. The red-robed man smiled, and with a nonchalant shrug of his shoulders, he lifted his arms and waved his sleeves lightly. The fragrance that pervaded the entire room then quickly dissipated completely in a short period of time. In tandem with the scent disappearing, June King and the others found their strength returning back to their bodies. June Wuxi stood up, and although her face was still rather pale, those eyes on her however did not show the slightest bit of weakness. Seems like your humble servant has misjudged you. I had thought that I have met a young and ignorant mistress, never expecting that my mistress you would give me such a big surprise. You are my mistress indeed the red-robed man frivolously walked over to come before June Wuxi, and stretched out his hand thinking to put in on June Wuxi's cheek. 
June Wooks's brows furrowed up into a frown and was about to dodge when a ray of light suddenly flashed past, in between June Wooksy and the red-robed man. A tiny figure suddenly appeared in front of June Wooksy and moving at a very fast speed, the red-robed man who was in close proximity to June Wooksy was pushed back. Don't touch my mistress. Indignant with rage, Little Lotus had suddenly come rushing out, the expression on his fair and chubby face angry and nervous as he waved his short hands angrily in front of him, to push the red-robed man physically away from June Wooksy, seeming like the red-robed man's proximity to June Wooksy would profane his mistress, Chapter 1189, Poppy Flower, 1. The red-robed man's eyes narrowed as he stared at Little Lotus with his stubby arms flailing wildly and tiny teeth bared, and the end of his eyebrows lifted slightly as he grabbed at Little Lotus swinging arms. Haven't seen you for some time and I see that you have become a whole lot braver. The red-robed man said as he stared at Little Lotus. The highly indignant little lotus found his arms held within the red-robed man's grip and his puny strength was no match for his opponent, and could only look up pitifully with his head raised up, to see the other party's face staring at him sinisterly. You 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 let me go little lotus was getting tongue-tied. The red-robed man lowered his head and looked little lotus with his tears brimming in his eyes and said in a highly teasing tone, just now, you wanted me to back off from whose mistress? Me mine little lotus pouted, on the very verge of tears. Oh? An eyebrow arched up on the red-robed man's face, a red glint flashing in his eye. Wah! Having been threatened, the forced facade of bravery little lotus had put up before almost instantly dissolved as he bawled loudly, the tears gushing out from his eyes, his tiny body shaking like a willow in the wind, looking extremely pitiful. June King and Long Chi saw everything before their eyes in flabbergasted amazement, overwhelmed by the sudden wave of information, unable to comprehend just what was really happening at that moment. The only thing that was clear in their mind, was that another tiny little toddler had suddenly appeared, and why had he broken into tears all of a sudden? The black beast had already morphed back into the little black cat, rolling its eyes as it raised its paw onto its face. Towards Little Lotus' moronic actions, it really couldn't force itself to watch on any longer. Can that little idiot get any dumber? If it was going to be frightened into tears with just a few words from people, what was the purpose that he even came out in the first place? Towards Little Lotus sobbing, the red robed seemed to be highly used to it as he stared at the little one who was just bawling his eyes out, and the red robed man's eyes filled with an evil glint. He gripped both of Little Lotus' little claws with one hand, and with the other, seemingly well practiced. He slipped it under Little Lotus' bib. Little Lotus began crying even more loudly. Eh? Why isn't it there? After feeling about, the red robed man discovered nothing but just an emptiness in his hand, which the red robed man was feeling rather unused to. He raised up Little Lotus' tiny tear streaked face and said, Little idiot, where are your lotus seeds? Don't tell me you have been slacking after leaving the spirit world and you haven't even been able to produce any lotus seeds. You. You let me go. While well, a little lotus continued to cry pitifully. The red-robed man was going to tease him further when unexpectedly, a small fair hand pressed on his arm, and rescued little lotus from his evil claws. June Wooksy pulled little lotus, who was crying so badly he was gasping to breathe between his sobs to her side. She finally knew now, when Little Lotus had said that he did not have many of his lotus seeds left because they had been eaten up by those guys. She guessed that this man before her, was one member among those who ate his lotus seeds. Mistress. Little Lotus looked at June Wooksy with his eyes wet with tears and he fell into June Wooksy's arms to continue to bawl loudly, as if he had suffered some major injustice. Little Lotus had never even in his dreams, ever thought that he would see the red-robed man here. The heavens knew, that his legs turned to jelly the moment he sees the man. Back in the spirit world, that fellow was one of the scoundrels that loved to bully him the most. He had thought with his mistress to stick to now and having left the spirit world, he would be able to avoid those scoundrels. Never had he expected, one had now come straight up to the door. 
At that moment, Little Lotus felt as if his entire flowery existence had no more hope in front of him. Chapter 1190, Poppy Flower, 2. Towards the chaotic situation in the room, Jun King and Long Chi was showing that they really did not understand what was really going on at all and they decided they might as well clamp their mouths shut and took it as they were watching a performance, worried that they might just be seen as being too dumb to comprehend anything out of it. Mistress is being showing favoritism. That little delt is your ring spirit and so am I. Why do I not see mistress comforting me as well? The red robed man complained, crossing his arms in front of his chest, as he tilted his head slovenly to look at Jun Wuxi. Little Lotus heard that and was immediately unhappy. But banking on Jun Wuxi having taken his side, he raised his teary eyes and looked at Jun Wuxi to say, Mistress, can you don't want him? He is the worst back in the spirit world, you won't be able to find any bad eggs worse than him. Having suffered endless bullying and was badly ravaged in the past, Little Lotus didn't like it in the least that he had to share the same owner with the red-robed man as that would mean that he would once again fall into the red-robed man's evil claws. Little Lotus had just said those words when he could felt as if a fire burning was burning behind his back which frightened him so badly he did not even dare to turn his head to look behind. I see that this little idiot has learned to be smarter, and you now know how to use the circumstances to avenge your personal agenda. The red-robed man said with an eyebrow arched up and he turned to say to June Wuxi, whether Poppy stays or not, is entirely up to mistress to decide. Poppy? June Wuxi's eyebrow lifted. The term was exactly the same as it was in her previous life. Poppy flower, a type that had been discovered in very early times a plant that could be extracted to be used to concoct various drugs and painkillers. In those years when Jun Wuxi had been with the organization, she had seen poppy flowers before. Although the organization belonged to neither side of the law and treaded the thin line of grain between, there were two things that they did not ever touch or get involved in and one was them was drugs. Because of that, they had even once sent agents to bust up a kingpin drug lord's nest torching large swathes of poppy flowers they had planted there, in many people's eyes, the poppy flower was intricately linked to endless crime, a flower of evil, and the drugs concocted from them, had claimed the lives of an immeasurable number of people, and destroyed a countless number of families. That little flower that was filled with so much evil, was however bright red like blood, beautiful but deadly. June Wuxi had once cultivated a few poppy flowers in her own lab but it was not used to make harmful drugs, but was extracted and used in medicine that induced paralysis of the nerves, but although the purpose of its use differed, whether it was used to harm people, or to save a person, it would cause the user to develop a high reliance on it, and an addiction hard to eradicate. After conducting some research on it for some time, June Wuxi had not touched it anymore ever since. Never having expected, that her second ring spirit, would turn out to be a poppy flower. When she had smelt that familiar fragrance earlier, she had already had some guesses about it. That's right my mistress, you can address me as such. I am willing to become a poppy flower that blooms only for you alone. Poppy said as he knelt on one knee at June Wuxi's feet. His languid manner disappeared, and was at that moment solemn as he gingerly lifted one hand of June Wuxi's, and sealed his pledge with a light kiss on the back of her hand. June Wuxi's eyebrow furrowed up and the little black cat was looking at Poppy with a you're so dead gaze. Daring to kiss its mistress hand, if that demon lord ever catches you, it wouldn't matter if you're man or ghost, flower or spirit, it will only end in one word, death. Poppy was completely oblivious to the little black cat's inner thoughts and had already gotten up to take a step back. Little Lotus was still avoiding him like the plague as he hid behind June Wuxi, a trembling little mass. His eyes red from crying, looking at Poppy accusingly for all the evil Poppy had once done upon him. He didn't want to share the same mistress with Poppy. Wah! Who can save him? Hurry up and come drag this scoundrel away from here now. What? 